God or no God, Islamic viewpoint versus God or no God, Islamic viewpoint versus atheist viewpoint, part 4. Fascinating complex structures that baffled even Darwin. The sight of a feather in a peacock's tail, whenever I gaze at it, makes me sick. Charles Darwin. The eye to this day gives me a cold shudder. Charles Darwin. Issues atheists are unable to answer. 1. How nothing created everything, and how life emerged from non-living matter. 2. How can blind forces create vision? Or a deaf forces create hearing? Or a reckless of forces create creativity and wisdom? Or a inanimate of forces create sense and feelings? 3. What is the origin of the laws of physics, and why everything in the universe obeys these laws? 4. How can random, mindless processes produce codes, information, and language? 5. How can disinterested and unselfish actions such altruism, empathy, and compassion fit the evolutionary motto of, survival of the fittest? 6. How can a chance universe exhibit design and order, and why is the universe so finely tuned for life? The Staggering Complexity of a Living Cell At the time of Darwin and his contemporaries, the cell appeared to be no more than a black spot under the simple light microscope, which was the first microscope to be used in the study of the cell. It consisted of a single, small, convex lens with 25 times magnification power. Thus hampered by inadequate instruments for observing life under the microscope, Darwin concluded, upon viewing a cell, that it was a simple jelly-like substance, just a blob of protoplasm. He never imagined the incredible complexity and intricate information contained in a living cell. Genetic information became accessible and explorable only by means of the modern electron microscope, which can magnify an object up to 2 million times its original size. Subsequent discoveries revealed that the cell was not a fluid-filled balloon, as Darwin had imagined, but an irreducibly complex structure consisting of tiny, high-tech biological machines. To grasp in detail, said the German biologist von Bertalanffy, the physiochemical organization of the simplest cell is far beyond our capacity. Microsoft founder Bill Gates recognized the limitations of computer language in contrast to the cell's ability to store and utilize living data, saying, Human DNA is like a computer program but far, far more advanced than any we've ever created. Expressing his amazement at the complexity of the cell, molecular biologist Michael Denton said, Molecular biology has shown that even the simplest of all living systems on the Earth today. Bacterial cells are exceedingly complex objects. Although the tiniest bacterial cells are incredibly small, weighing less than 10 to 12 grams. Each is in effect a veritable micro-miniaturized factory, containing thousands of exquisitely designed pieces of intricate molecular machinery, made up altogether of 100,000 million atoms. Far more complicated than any machine built by man and absolutely without parallel in the non-living world. A single system which is composed of several well-matched, interacting parts that contribute to the basic function. And where the removal of any one of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. Kinesin, the cell's postal system. Our Lord is he who gave to everything its proper form and guided it to its proper function. Quran 2050 Pharaoh said, in denial of what they brought, Who then is your Lord, whom you claim has sent you to me, O Moses? Moses said, Our Lord is the one who gave everything the shape and form suitable for it, and then he guided all created things to what they were created for. Surah Ta Ha! <laughs> 49-50 The noble Quran makes a distinction between the creation of a thing and its sense of direction. This sense of direction is a mysterious dimension present in everything, directing it toward its proper God-assigned role. The motor protein kinesin carries cellular cargo along roadways and cells, called microtubules. In a sense, it acts like a postman delivering parcels inside the cell. Signs in yourselves on the earth are signs for those of assured faith. And in yourselves. Can you not see? Quran 51 20-21 and in the earth and the mountains, seas, rivers, trees. Plants and animals that Allah has placed in them are proof of Allah's power for those who have conviction that Allah is their creator and fashioner. And in your own selves, O oh people, are proof of Allah's power, do you not see to take lessons? Surah Adh Dariyat 20-21 The human body is composed of approximately 100 trillion cells, divided into over 200 different types of specialized cells, such as skin cells, muscle cells, bone cells, brain cells, and so on. Every human starts as one cell unique in every way, each human is unique and unrepeatable. That one cell, a fertilized egg, turns into the trillions of cells that make up a complete human being. As the first cell multiplies, it forms a mass of undifferentiated cells. As the embryo grows, the cells become differentiated. This means they specialize to form different organs with vastly different functions. 
How can the cells in a human body start out exactly the same, then some of them decide to become brain cells, heart cells, or liver cells? All cells in a person's body contain exactly the same genetic material, DNA, as the parent cell. How can a number of newly divided cells, each containing identical DNA, differentiate into different types of cells and therefore into different organs? Each cell has the same number of genes, 24,000. A skin cell turns on the genes that make it a skin cell, while a bone cell would leave these genes turned off. How do cells switch their genes on and off? And, more importantly, how do they know which genes to switch on and which genes to switch off? How do cells decide which proteins to make, how much, when, and where? This amazing flow of facts about the cell leads us to inevitably ask the questions. Who designed the cell? Who taught it exactly what to do? Mindless, blundering atoms have conspired to make, not just life, not just mind, but understanding. This, a universe, can be no trivial detail, no minor byproduct of mindless, purposeless forces. We are truly meant to be here, physicist Paul Davies, the mind of God. The role of science. Basically, science is about exploring and understanding the natural world through observation and experimentation. Diverse and infinite realities exist, both within and outside the reach of normal senses, and, it is through science that humans can learn about them to enhance their well-being. Science is not a fixed set of facts. It is an ever-changing flux, always open to new theories, explanations, and discoveries, which from time to time get changed, corrected, or disproven with up-to-date and more reliable theories replacing the old. The truth in science is never final. Just because science can explain many various unknown issues does not mean that it can explain everything. There are matters of morality, meaning, and purpose that lie outside the scope of science. Right and wrong do not come from physics, chemistry, or biology. Science does not instruct us how to treat one's neighbor as oneself, how to clothe the naked and feed the hungry, or why it is wrong to murder, steal, bear false witness, or hurt others. Science is totally silent about all these topics. I am very astonished that the scientific picture of the real world around me is very deficient. It gives us a lot of factual information puts all our experience in a magnificently consistent order, but it is ghastly silent about all and sundry that is really near to our heart. That really matters to us. It cannot tell us a word about red and blue, bitter and sweet, physical pain and physical delight. IT knows nothing of beautiful and ugly, good or bad, God and eternity. Nobel laureate, quantum physicist Erwin Schrödinger. Collaboration rather than conflict. 1. In Islam, conflict between science and religion is inconceivable. Religion comes from God and so does the universe, with all its laws and phenomena. True religion and accurate science, therefore, cannot contradict each other because their source is one and the same, God. They are components of one mission, explaining truth, religion through divine revelation, and science through investigation and evidence. 2. Islam emerges from the very first revealed Quranic word, the command, read, as essentially a religion of knowledge in which growing in faith as well as understanding is what lifts up a human. The Quran specifically states, God will exalt and degree those of you who believe, and those who have been given knowledge. Quran 58,11 After Allah mentioned the etiquette of speech, he mentions the etiquette of gatherings, and says, O oh, those who have faith in Allah and act upon what Allah has legislated for them. When you are told, make space in gatherings, then make space, Allah will create ease for you in your worldly lives and in the afterlife. And when you are told, leave from so and so gatherings so that people of virtue may take part in them, leave those gatherings. Allah, may he be glorified, will raise in great stature those who have faith among you and those blessed with knowledge. And Allah is the knower of whatever you do, none of your actions are hidden from him, and he will requite you for them. Surah Al-Mujadila E11 3. In the whole Quran, the only supplication for increases, say, My Lord. Increase me in knowledge. 20 colon 114. Allah is high above and exalted from what the idolaters describe him with of deficiencies and from what they attribute, as partners to him. He is the majestic king, to whom belongs the kingdom of everything, and who is the truth and speaks the truth. Do not hasten, O messenger, in reciting the Quran with Gabriel before it is completely conveyed to you, and say, O Lord, increase me in knowledge, on top of what you have already taught me. Surah Ta. Ha! <laughs> 1 Throughout book, humankind is urged over and over to observe and reflect on creation. Thus, knowledge according to the purpose and essence of Islam is not only a matter of encouragement, but obligation. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Seeking knowledge is a duty for every Muslim, man or woman. Sunan ibn Majah
For us science and religion belong to two different but equally important realms of knowledge. They complement each other and do not conflict because there is no overlap between the areas occupied by each. Since human beings are made up of both body and soul, Since human beings Since human beings are made up of both body and soul, they are both physical and spiritual beings. Science deals with the physical aspect of their world, the realm of facts, figures, and formulas, while religion deals with the spiritual aspect, the realm of beliefs, morals, manners, ideals, values, and meaning. 5. Both science and religion teach humans many things about themselves and the universe in which they live, often in complementary and intersecting ways. Science adds to faith and faith adds to science. They have important mutual interests and important contributions to make to each other. 6. Within this framework, every new scientific discovery represents a step forward in human knowledge and another step forward in appreciation of God's amazing creation. The more humans learn about the mysteries of the universe and the human body, the more they become in awe of God. Science itself does not contradict the hypothesis of God. Rather, IT gives us a window on a dynamic and creative universe that expands our appreciation of the divine in ways that could not have been imagined in ages past. Kenneth Miller Scientists' stance toward religion For most of history, up until the middle of the 19th century, science and religion were viewed as co-workers in the human quest for understanding, in which science served as an avenue to deeper faith in and appreciation of the Creator. Science relied on the conviction that the universe was rational, orderly, and intelligible throughout, that it ran according to comprehensible and uniform laws that could be observed and discovered, precisely because it was designed and ordered by a rational creator. Logically, if reality was ultimately chaotic and unintelligible, the universe would be incomprehensible, making science impossible. Almost all the scientists of that period believed that behind creation, there is a creator. Galileo, Copernicus, Newton, Kepler, Pasteur, and nearly all of the founding fathers of science were men of faith who attributed their interest in science to their belief in God. The thoughtfulness and complexity with which the universe was meticulously crafted, all the way down to the finest details, pointed these scientists not only to God, but hinted at what kind of God he must be. Sir Isaac Newton, the discoverer of the universal law of gravitation, said, This most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent being. Because God is perfect, his creations must be perfect and operate according to uniform rules. Trust that there were mathematical laws, rather than chaos, strongly motivated these scientists to find them. Done with Allah's help and grace. Muslims' contribution to science. Lost of Christians left Christianity and the reason was clearly, it contradicts science. What about Muslims? Here you can read a brief information about Muslims and science in the past. Astronomy Muslims have always had a special interest in astronomy. The moon and the sun are of vital importance in the daily life of every Muslim. By the moon, Muslims determine the beginning and the end of the months in their lunar calendar. By the sun the Muslims calculate the times for prayer and fasting. It is also by means of astronomy that Muslims can determine the precise direction of the Qibla to face the Kaaba in Mecca during prayer. The most precise solar calendar, superior to the Julian, is the Jalali, devised under the supervision of Umar Khayyam. The Quran contains many references to astronomy. The heavens and the earth were ordered rightly, and were made subservient to man, including the sun, the moon, the stars, and day and night. Every heavenly body moves in an orbit assigned to it by God and never digresses, making the universe an orderly cosmos whose life and existence, diminution and expansion are totally determined by the Creator. Quran 30,22 from among his great signs which prove his power and oneness, is that he created the heavens and the earth, and your different languages and skin colors. Indeed, in the aforementioned are proofs and evidences for the people of knowledge and insight. From among his great signs which prove his power and oneness, is your sleeping by night and wakefulness by day, so that you may rest from the tiredness of your work. And from among his signs is that he made the day so that you may disperse, seeking sustenance from your Lord. Indeed, in the aforementioned are proofs and evidences for people who listen attentively while contemplating and accepting. Surah Ar-Ram 22-23
These references, and the injunctions to learn, inspired the early Muslim scholars to study the heavens. They integrated the earlier works of the Indians, Persians, and Greeks into a new synthesis. Ptolemy's Almagest, the title as we know it is Arabic, was translated, studied, and criticized. Many new stars were discovered, as we see in their Arabic names, Algol, Deneb, Betelgeuse, Rigel, Aldebaran. Astronomical tables were compiled, among them the Tolden tables, which were used by Copernicus, Tycho Brahe, and Kepler. Also compiled were almanacs, another Arabic term. Other terms from Arabic are zenith, nadir, albedo, azimuth. Muslim astronomers were the first to establish observatories, like the one built at Maghara by Hulagu, the son of Genghis Khan, in Persia. And they invented instruments such as the quadrant and astrolabe, which led to advances not only in astronomy but in oceanic navigation, contributing to the European age of exploration. Geography Muslim scholars paid great attention to geography. In fact, the Muslims' great concern for geography originated with their religion. The Quran encourages people to travel throughout the earth to see God's signs and patterns everywhere. Islam also requires each Muslim to have at least enough knowledge of geography to know the direction of the Qibla, the position of the Kaaba in Mecca, in order to pray five times a day. On journeys, to conduct trade as well as to make the Hajj and spread their religion. The far-flung Islamic empire enabled scholar-explorers to compile large amounts of geographical and climatic information, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Among the most famous names in the field of geography, even in the West, are Ibn Khaldun and Ibn Battuta, renowned for their written accounts of their extensive explorations. In 1166, Al-Idraisi, the well-known Muslim scholar who served the Sicilian court, produced very accurate maps, including a world map with all the continents and their mountains rivers, and famous cities. Al-Mukdishi was the first geographer to produce accurate maps in color. It was, moreover, with the help of Muslim navigators and their inventions that Magellan was able to traverse the Cape of Good Hope, and De Gama and Columbus had Muslim navigators on board their ships. Humanity Seeking knowledge is obligatory in Islam for every Muslim, man and woman. The main sources of Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah, Prophet Muhammad's traditions, encourage Muslims to seek knowledge and be scholars, since this is the best way for people to know Allah, God. To appreciate his wondrous creations and be thankful for them. Muslims were therefore eager to seek knowledge, both religious and secular, and within a few years of Muhammad's mission, a great civilization sprang up and flourished. The outcome is shown in the spread of Islamic universities, al zaytuna in Tunis, and al azza in Cairo go back more than 1,000 years and are the oldest existing universities in the world. Indeed, they were the models for the first European universities, such as Bologna, Heidelberg, and the Sorbonne. Even the familiar academic cap and gown originated at al azza University. Muslims made great advances in many different fields, such as geography, physics, chemistry, mathematics, medicine, pharmacology, architecture, linguistics, and astronomy. Algebra and the Arabic numerals were introduced to the world by Muslim scholars. The astrolabe, the quadrant, and other navigational devices and maps were developed by Muslim scholars and played an important role in world progress, most notably in Europe's age of exploration. Muslim scholars studied the ancient civilizations from Greece and Rome to China and India. The works of Aristotle, Ptolemy, Euclid and others were translated into Arabic. Muslim scholars and scientists then added their own creative ideas, discoveries, and inventions, and finally transmitted this new knowledge to Europe, leading directly to the Renaissance. Many scientific and medical treatises, having been translated into Latin, were standard text and reference books as late as the 17th and 18th centuries. Mathematics It is interesting to note that Islam so strongly urges mankind to study and explore the universe. For example, the Holy Quran states, we, Allah, will show you, mankind, our signs patterns in the horizons universe and in yourselves until you are convinced that the revelation is the truth. Quran 41,53. I will show them my signs in the heavens and on earth. I will show them my signs within souls so that it will become clear to them without any doubt that this Quran is the truth without any doubt. Is it not enough for these idolaters that the Quran is true by Allah's testimony that it is from him? Who can be a greater witness than Allah? If they were seeking the truth, they would have sufficed with the testimony of their Lord. Surah Fasilat 53 This invitation to explore and search made Muslims interested in astronomy, mathematics, chemistry, and the other sciences. And they had a very clear and firm understanding of the correspondences among geometry, mathematics, and astronomy. The Muslims invented the symbol for zero, the word cipher comes from Arabic cipher, and they organized the numbers into the decimal system, base 10. 
Additionally, they invented the symbol to express an unknown quantity, i.e., variables like x. The first great Muslim mathematician, Al-Khwarizmi, invented the subject of algebra, al-Jabr, which was further developed by others, most notably Umar Khayyam. Al-Khwarizmi's work, in Latin translation, brought the Arabic numerals along with the mathematics to Europe, through Spain. The word algorithm is derived from his name. Muslim mathematicians excelled also in geometry, as can be seen in their graphic arts, and it was the great Al-Biruni, who excelled also in the fields of natural history. Even geology and mineralogy, who established trigonometry as a distinct branch of mathematics. Other Muslim mathematicians made significant progress in number theory. Medicine In Islam, the human body is a source of appreciation, as it is created by Almighty Allah, God. How it functions, how to keep it clean and safe, how to prevent diseases from attacking it or cure those diseases, have been important issues for Muslims. Prophet Muhammad himself urged people to take medicines for your diseases, as people at that time were reluctant to do so. He also said, God created no illness, but established for it a cure, except for old age. When the antidote is applied, the patient will recover with the permission of God. This was strong motivation to encourage Muslim scientists to explore, develop, and apply empirical laws. Much attention was given to medicine and public health care. The first hospital was built in Baghdad in 706 AC. The Muslims also used camel caravans as mobile hospitals, which moved from place to place. Since the religion did not forbid it, Muslim scholars used human cadavers to study anatomy and physiology and to help their students understand how the body functions. This empirical study enabled surgery to develop very quickly. Al-Razi, known in the West as Razis, the famous physician and scientist, D. 932, was one of the greatest physicians in the world in the Middle Ages. He stressed empirical observation and clinical medicine and was unrivaled as a diagnostician. He also wrote a treatise on hygiene in hospitals. Caliph Abul Qasim al-Zarawi was a very famous surgeon in the 11th century, known in Europe for his work, Concessio, Kitab al-Tasrif. Ibn Sina, d. 1037, better known to the West as Avicenna, was perhaps the greatest physician until the modern era. His famous book, al Kanan fi al-Tib, remained a standard textbook even in Europe, for over 700 years. Ibn Sina's work is still studied and built upon in the East. Other significant contributions were made in pharmacology, such as Ibn Sina's Kitab al-Shifa, Book of Healing, and in public health. Every major city in the Islamic world had a number of excellent hospitals, some of them teaching hospitals, and many of them were specialized for particular diseases, including mental and emotional. The Ottomans were particularly noted for their building of hospitals and for the high level of hygiene practiced in them. Definition The word Islam has a twofold meaning, peace, and submission to God. This submission requires a fully conscious and willing effort to submit to the one Almighty God. One must consciously and conscientiously give oneself to the service of Allah. This means to act on what Allah enjoins all of us to do, in the Quran, and what his beloved Prophet. Muhammad Aithbu, encouraged us to do in his Sunnah, his lifestyle and sayings, personifying the Quran. Once we humble ourselves, rid ourselves of our egoism and submit totally to Allah, and to him exclusively, in faith and in action, we will surely feel peace in our hearts. Establishing peace in our hearts will bring about peace in our external conduct as well. Islam is careful to remind us that it not a religion to be paid mere lip service, rather it is an all-encompassing way of life that must be practiced continuously for it to be Islam. The Muslim must practice the five pillars of the religion. The declaration of faith in the oneness of Allah and the prophethood of Muhammad, prayer, fasting the month of Ramadan, alms tax, and the pilgrimage to Mecca and believe in the six articles of faith, belief in God, the holy books, the prophets, the angels, the day of judgment and God's decree, whether for good or ill. There are other injunctions and commandments which concern virtually all facets of one's personal, family, and civic life. These include such matters as diet, clothing, personal hygiene, interpersonal relations, business ethics, responsibilities towards parents, spouse and children, marriage, divorce and inheritance. Civil and criminal law, fighting in defense of Islam, relations with non-Muslims, and so much more.